For the next step of this project, the things you're going to need to have gathered are, if you have them, watercolors are great, just some plain regular old watercolor paints, a paintbrush, some clean water, and if you don't have watercolors, you could use markers as watercolors, that's fine. And then the other material that I have here is a really kind of cool technique for watercolors. I actually have some salt, just regular old table salt in a little cup. I don't, you don't need much of it because it's definitely kind of one of those things where um, you, you don't want to overuse it, but I've got some salt ready. And you're, you're gonna paint this thing. Now, what I wanna think about is, you know, if, if it was a real fish, it would be the same from one side to the other. So if I paint this fin purple, I probably want to paint this fin purple as well. So it might help me, instead of working with my fish folded up, it might help me to work with my fish laying out flat so that I can work one side to the other. And as you're working, um, there's two watercolor techniques that I want you to test out and play with a little bit in this project. The first one is called a bleed or wet into wet. And what that is is where you apply water to the shape that you're working on. So I'm going to work on this fin. And I've not activated my watercolors yet. It would have been smart of me to have activated my watercolors by stirring in some water first, but I'll come back to that. All right, I'm gonna stir in some water to my purple. And I'm gonna go ahead and choose a second color that's close to purple on the color wheel. So I'll choose this kind of pink color. All right, so I'm stirring those two together. Or not together, I'm, I'm activating them. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab some of this purple here and because I've applied water, you can paint that paint in there. And what it will do is it will kind of travel and grow over that water. Okay, so I'm applying wet paint onto a wet paper. So wet into wet, and it kind of bleeds around in an interesting way. Okay, now if I choose a color that is close to purple on the color wheel, for example, pink, because you know red and pink or red and purple are close to each other on the color wheel, they will make a nice color blend together. So I can actually come on here and I can grab some pink and I can add some pink in to my purple. Okay, and I'm not really stirring them together to mix them, I'm just kind of putting them next to each other and they will bleed into each other and mix some on their own without mixing all the way. So it's just, it's a really neat watercolor technique. I wanna be careful about how I let this thing dry. I wanna make sure I let it dry flat so that that bleed can happen over the surface of it without um, like dripping into other areas. Now the other technique is working with salt. All right, when you're using the salt technique, you wanna think about it like your food. If you add too much salt to your food, it doesn't taste good, right? If you, but your food needs like maybe a little bit of salt to make it kind of bump up the flavor a little bit, just make, makes it taste a little bit better. But you gotta find that balance of not too much, just enough. And that's what we're gonna do here. So the way you're gonna work with the salt, um, you're gonna apply the watercolor first to your work, and then you're just gonna take a little pinch of salt and sprinkle it on. But once the salt is on your work, you've gotta leave it alone and let it dry. You don't want to, um, touch it after you've put it on there. You definitely don't want to paint over top of it because it'll kind of wreck up your paintbrush. You, you know, just let it kind of sit and do its thing. And what it'll do is it'll absorb up some of the water from your piece, um, leaving behind these almost like little cool crystal starburst looking um, texture. All right, so I'm just going to paint some watercolor on here. And the other trick on this is if your watercolor is too dry, there's not enough watercolor or water for that salt to soak up. So you've got to make sure that it's got a little bit of a puddle, but that it's not so puddly that it's kind of too much. So I've painted some on here, and I'm just going to take my salt and I'm going to sprinkle just a little bit on, and that's all I'm going to do. I'm just going to let it sit, I'm going to let it do its thing, and it'll turn out something pretty cool here as it dries. And I'm going to keep working across the other shapes, making a match from one side of my fish to the other. And as I work, before I allow that paint to dry at all, I'm going to pick up my next little sprinkle, just a pinch of salt, sprinkle it on, and then let it do its thing. So as I'm working across the rest of my fish, I'm going to do some different blends, um, different bleeds, as well as some different salt technique um, in different places, just so I've got some cool watercolor techniques happening on my fish.
Okay, so I have my fish all the way painted. All the spaces are painted. Now I just need to let it dry so that I can move on to the next step. But I did want to point out the patterning that that, <clears throat> or texture that that salt technique makes. So it shows up really nicely here in this green section. Um, you can just see the different little, almost like crystal techniques that came from the salt. Once it's totally dry, you don't want to do this with it when it's wet, but once spaces are totally dry or really even your whole fish is totally dry, you can brush off any of that extra salt and just kind of knock it away. Um, and then you'll be ready for the very last step of this project, which is to assemble your Koinobari fish.